Okay, we're going to look at improving underexposed photography that was taken in challenging lighting conditions. So my example image here, the cows in the foreground have been deliberately underexposed to try and capture some more highlight detail as it was a very bright sky, creating a very challenging situation for the camera, especially one with limited dynamic range. So then, where to start? Well, the first thing we can do is pull the highlights back all the way using the shadows and highlights adjustment. And then we can get the black point and drag it all the way to the left to gradually brighten up or expose, if you will, the foreground. Then, in addition to this, what we're going to do is draw over on the tones panel here an inverted S curve. So rather than the traditional S shape that you would produce using curves, you've probably seen that before, we're going to invert it. So instead, the top node is going to go below the center point and the bottom node is going to go above, like so. So you'll notice we're developing from a raw file, we're in the develop persona. So what we're doing in this persona, rather than getting our kind of preferred look, is instead we're creating a very flat image with as much shadow and highlight detail as possible that we can then manipulate further. So that concludes the raw adjustments. So we'll go ahead, click develop. And I'll just get sidetracked quickly and talk about uh, generally when you're sort of pushing up underexposed imagery, you're revealing the lack of precision in shadow tones. And this is typical for a lot of digital cameras there's more precision, more information recorded in the mid-tones and the highlights than there are the, the shadow tones. So we need to take account of this because we might run into it as an issue later when we start to push the image tonally. So here is a neat little trick that uses one of Photo's blending features. I'm going to go ahead and add a brightness and contrast adjustment. And on this adjustment, Let's set, say, a small amount of brightness and then drag contrast further up to kind of bring back some contrasty punch to the cows in the foreground here. But we can be a bit more flexible with this. And instead of mask it or do something that's quite complicated, instead, what we can do is go into the Blend Ranges dialog here. And on the Source Layer Ranges, what we'll do is grab the node at the highlight end and bring it all the way down. Then we can uncheck linear and add a node about here so we have this sort of gradual rising curve towards the shadow tones. So what this does is blend the adjustments effect more into the shadow tones and the mid-tones than it does the highlights. So if I go ahead and just hide this layer you can see the difference and we're only sort of partially really affecting the sky. In fact, we're not even affecting these highlight tones here. We're only affecting the darker tones in between the clouds. OK, so that's one way we can bring back contrast into our subjects. Additionally, something I've noticed is that this was shot with a daylight white balance. Um, the sun was just starting to set, as you can see in the background here. So just to liven this up a bit, I'll go in, add a white balance adjustment, and just add a bit of a tint to warm the image up. Now here's another great feature. We might feel at this point that the subjects aren't really popping visually, uh, partly as a result of starting with the low contrast and then adding in contrast selectively. So another great tip is we'll select the background image layer go to New Live Filter Layer and select an Unsharp Mask Filter. And then we want to set the Blend Mode on this filter to Darken. And all we do here is just drag the radius slider all the way to 100 pixels. So this significantly increases local contrast in the image, but because of the Blend Mode we don't get that ringing halo-like effect around edges, which is quite nice, and it just ends up bringing out the darker tones in the image. So I'll just move across here and hide this. As you can see, it just helps separate the cows from the sky in the background. 
So then, our final step, and remember I was talking earlier about exposing the lack of precision in the shadow tones, and this camera in particular has what's described as fixed pattern noise. And it's basically a fixed pattern on the sensor that tends to be exposed when you're dealing with pushing shadow tones, that type of thing. In addition, the lack of precision means that there's not a lot of detail hiding there, it's mostly noise. So to try and tackle this, with our background layer selected, we'll go to Filters, Noise, and Denoise, and we'll drag the luminance slider up to 50%. Now, at the moment, I appreciate it looks like we're kind of ruining the image. We're smoothing out a lot of the high frequency detail, but we are going to remedy this. So I'll click Apply and apply the denoising. Then I'll go to Filters, Noise, Add Noise, and check monochromatic, and I'm going to add a small amount, about 8% of artificial noise. So essentially what we've done is removed the fixed pattern noise, which kind of looks ugly, and we've replaced it with our own synthetic noise that adds this kind of textural grain to the image and looks a bit more pleasing. So I appreciate it's kind of subtle and perhaps not as easy to see when you're watching this on a video. But if you experiment with your own images, then you'll be able to see the effect it has. So there we go, really, just a few tips and techniques on improving underexposed imagery. I hope that's given you some ideas. This type of approach is, of course, best with raw imagery because you've got more precision to work with in the beginning. But you can also try this out with JPEGs straight out of the camera. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or queries, please do ask on the Affinity forums. And don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. Thank you for watching.